Yes, good morning, people. Welcome back to Lee Judges TV. I'm your host, Dan Potts, and I'm with Lee Judges. Lee, what a performance last night. Uh, I've got to give it to you, mate. I've got to hand it to you. You said that we'd win. You said we'd win comfortably. You did say Harry Kane would score. You did say you wouldn't celebrate. And you did say that Harry Kane could now go on to get the golden boot. Lee, what did you make of that last night, mate? It's coming home. It's coming. Football's coming home. Listen, I'll tell you this now. Fantastic performance. Listen, they're poor Ukraine. Let's, know, let's not go overboard about that. They're poor. But I'll say it and I'll say it again, whether, you, whether you're a Harry Kane lover or you're not, he will be the one that determines whether we win this competition or not because I don't think there's anybody else in the, in the competition like him. If Italy had an Harry Kane, uh, or Spain had a Harry Kane, they're definite winners. Everybody would turn around and say 100% they're winning this competition. I'd even go as far as if we've got Calvin Lewin in their ranks, Spain or Italy, that they would be definitely winning it. So with England, I think the difference between all four sides in the competition now is Harry Kane because he's an ultimate goal scorer. There's no two ways about that. I look at Denmark, I don't think they've got too much in the firepower that can... Um, uh, get us, and I just think that I listen. I, Harry Kane and had one of the b brilliant tournaments that I know that he can play and everything, but he's still scoring goals. And um, uh, I, I, again, I, I, I thought he was quiet at times, but when it matters, goals you know what I mean? Like, and I will say this about Harry Kane you know, the goal against um, in uh, Germany wasn't easy. He had to finish it and he took it, you know what I mean? And I, So I do think that he's a, a big, big difference. I think that England can mix it up in diff, different areas. But the one one position that they they uh, won't mix it up is, is Harry Kane. I thought um, Sterling again done well for the pass and Bosch, he's in there to finish it. And uh, listen, um, he would have got a, a hat-trick. I, I had a little bet on him to get a hat-trick yesterday. I was, I was that confident, didn't I? I said to you that he'd get a hat-trick. Uh, and, and bloody Southgate went and took him off, like, and everybody yeah. said, I'm not cheering him, like, do you know what I mean? That's what I've got, like, do you know what I mean? So there you go, like, you know. So um, unfortunately, unfortunately, um, he didn't get the hat trick. But I, I still think he'll get another couple against Denmark. I think that put him on five going into the final. So I do think that he will end up uh, top top scorer in the, in the competition. And uh, I thought... Um, there were some good performances yesterday. And uh, listen, you, you can criticise Southgate before this tournament started and everything like that. He's got everything right so far. Everything right. We haven't conceded a goal yet. Saying, but do you know what? Don't look like conceding, Dan. Don't look like conceding. Mm. No, I have to agree. I mean, a lot of people in the chat saying good morning. Good morning to everyone in the chat. Good morning, Fergus. Uh, this is morning, Dan. Morning, Lee. I raise a pinky to you. Uh, it, even he was, uh, he's kind of half supporting England. Bless him. I know he's Irish, but he's looking at um, at what our results are. It's, it's uh, a, I'm, I'm, I'm still buzzing from last night. It's great, great, great to win. Uh, was... The country's buzzing. Everything's great. I, I, do you know what? Uh, I, I, I love seeing... Um, all the celebrations and all that, like, but I've, I've been looking back at like when I when Arsenal score and all that. When I watch it on TV, I don't actually go mad and go um, jump up and down. If you if you look at me, I'm, I, you know, because I'm enthralled in the game. So uh, you know, for me, for me, like seeing all the England fans and everything like that is fantastic. And I, I I'm, I'm you know really buzzing for the performance and we another two to go, gentlemen. Another two to go. Well, I tell you what, it's looking it's looking really good. Last night I was absolutely buzzing. I'm going to answer this question. Juice World Taurus says, "Who was your man of the match?" Sure. Someone's mentioned him in the chat already. I thought. Luke Shaw was absolutely outstanding. His delivery is unbelievable one-on-one yeah. -on -one defending. I have to give it to Luke Shaw. I know that everyone's going to go Kane or maybe, you know, Mount or one of the one of the attacking players, but I thought Luke Shaw was absolutely brilliant. And he's had a really good season for Man United, and he's a player that can't believe he's only 25. But, Lee, I thought he was brilliant last night. But did you think that the early goal helped um, England? Because, oh. obviously, you know, when you score early, you can always go on and, and do more. I think the more or the longer that it's nil-nil, it's harder for England. But we just come out of blocks, didn't we, really quickly? Yeah, um, I, I think that um, I think that, um, 
he was un unbelievable yesterday. I thought he was definitely the best player on the pit. I thought his delivery, as you say, delivery wasn't that low. Was, I thought he defended really well as well. I just think that he'd done everything well. It gets a little bit of criticism. He doesn't give the ball away. He, he gives it the mm. safe option, plays it back. Play, when, but when he has to deliver, he delivered. The cross for the goal was fantastic, like, you know what I mean? So, um, it, it, you know, he was brilliant. Listen, they all contributed yesterday, like, you know. Um, Mason Mount contributed yesterday. Um, mm. But, but, I'm, I'm going to say this now. I, I, I expected him to con, um, contribute against a very, very poor Ukraine side. I thought that, you know, I, I honestly think England could have... I said at one stage, England could have got six or seven in that game. But they were so, poor, weren't they? Ukraine they were poor. poor. But what he'd done was... it, And I think, you know, he'd he, he done it right. Got all the players off that were books. I thought it was just, you know... It, if you look at it now, in the context of it, it's the perfect, perfect game to have in the court final. No real um, mental, physical pressure. No extra time. Get everybody off. And I'll tell you this now, you know, people are saying, like, why doesn't um, um, play um, Grealish and all that? Don't forget, three games in seven days, at real high intensity. You know, now we've got our best player fresh for the semi-final and final. I think, that, you know, yeah. Gareth Southgate's played a real good... Uh, set of cards on this. I really do. I really it do. Deserves, it deserves credit, Lee, because, you know, listen, we've we've said we weren't a massive fan of the manager in terms of him being a, the right man and elite, elite manager. But I think he's got pretty much everything spot on, hasn't he? Can we, can we complain? I mean, we're considered a goal yet. I think he'd done it. He'd, he'd done it all right. I'll tell you what I thought was very clever in him yesterday. And, and, and people probably don't realise this, you know. He brought Henderson on as quickly and early as he could because Henderson's not going to start in none of these games at the moment because the two guys in front of him are too good. But I believe that if it's getting really tight in a game, 20, 20 minutes to go, and we need to shore things up, we need him uh, ready. And and it's just, you know, that that was great. And I think that, um, so if, if we have to go one way, and that's like, you know, um, seal it up and whatever, we can do that with the likes of Henderson and, and Bellingham. And if we have to go adventurous, we've got, um, I, I think, Grealish should start this game. But then we've got Sancho, Saka to come on and Foden. People, to me, have been writing off Foden. Don't write him off, you know what I mean? Class acts as a kid. He could come on and be a big difference as well. So we've still got four or five players that can make major, major contributions to the team, uh, whether it's from the bench or going forward. And I think that that's why England are so, so, I think, favourites. Because... As, as good as Italy are, I don't think they've got as many good attacking options as us so we can like rotate and rest as what we have done. No one in that um, competition at this moment is floundering. Uh, and I, I look at other teams that look a little bit jaded. Denmark at the end of the game look jaded and all that. Like, you know, we, we look fresh. And I know people will turn around and say, oh, that's because we haven't travelled and everything like that. But that's the luck of the draw and the luck of the way things are. You know, that's not our fault. And I think that, you know, the next two games at Wembley and um, uh, in the semi-final final, we can be relaxed. And I, I just think that we're going to be stronger than anybody else. And if we, has, we haven't had to go at penalties or extra time or anything like that, I think that uh, Spain and definitely uh, Italy have both gone, for, to, gone into extra time. So, um, you know, I think we're going to be the fresher team. Yeah, I must admit, I'm, I've been really um, impressed, particularly with last night. A few of the performances. I've not been a huge fan of Luke Shaw, to be honest with you. He went really downhill under Jose Mourinho as another one of these players that Jose seems to destroy. But since uh, Ollie's come in, I think Luke Shaw has been a really p consistent performer. And I think he got the joint best player of the season with Bruno Fernandes last season for Manchester United. So when he didn't start the first game, I thought oh, maybe that's a bit harsh, you know, start the players that have been on form. But then again, Trippier had just won the league with Atletico Madrid. So it was really hard not to with who to pick. And obviously Chilwell just uh, won the Champions League. So we've got some players there in that position that he could look at. And Luke Shaw, I think, the last couple of games, I thought he was brilliant against Germany. Um, and he was exceptional last night. Likewise, Harry Maguire, you know, I've given him some stick over the past couple of seasons, but I think he's he was great last night. Um, and you go through the team, Lee, is it fair to say struggling to find a player that had a poor game? I thought yeah, that was I don't think anybody's having a poor game. I think that you have to look at it. Everybody stepped up. Let, let's go on to it. Pickford's been criticised before the tournament started. He's made three crucial saves in this, in this tournament. John Stones, if this was the the um, championships of last season, when it should have been on, he wouldn't even been in the squad. 
because he was that poor. But he's had a fantastic season for Manchester City. He's really, and, and, he, and he's took that form into England. And, you know, people were laughing at him last season. You know, I think Arsenal were linked with him at one stage and everybody's yeah, laughing. And, uh, you know, saying everything now, like, you know. Um, you know, but um, I, I think that he's been fantastic for us as well, like, you know. And I, I've got to say this, I thought Walker played really, really well yesterday. His pace is a, um, a real good it's thing. unreal. Unreal, his pace. You know, give that recovery side of it all there. And, and I feel that we're um, in a good position to not, um, not concede a goal. I, you know, has anybody ever gone through a tournament and not conceded a goal? That's a good question. I don't know. People in the chat, let me know. If anyone could look yeah, that up. Has I anyone ever gone through a tournament that, without yeah. conceding? I, I mean, and I think really? that, I, 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 and I, I, I state it now, I don't think Denmark will score against us. I don't think they will. I think that um, they cause us a few different uh, problems, but I don't think they've got real that much firepower. So I think that um, we, um, we can... Um, uh, Look to play, you know. I think that what Denmark could do, and I think what you know, you know, let's be honest, what Ukraine did was they were, they were going to look for, to, to, to hold out for penalties, and and you can't do that in this competition. You've got to have something a little bit more. Four minutes in, you, you you've had it. So I'm 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 a I'm, I think that Denmark could probably do the same, maybe like on a set piece like they did against the Czechs yesterday. But for me, um, I, I think England do uh, do really well. Let's talk a little bit about Gareth Southgate because. <laughs> He does get stick. It's because I suppose he's not the manager with the CV of Sir Alex Ferguson or Arsene Wenger. But two tournaments, two semi-finals. Is that as much to do with him as it is to do with the England squad? Do you think, Lee, or do you think he has to take more credit than perhaps he's he's we're all giving him? I've, I've bit of both. I think I think you need a little bit of luck. I don't listen. I've I've said this before. England had a fantastic squad and fantastic set of players in 98 but to get to the final they had to beat um argentina if they'd beaten argentina then they had holland if they'd beaten holland they had brazil and then if they won it got to the final they had france you know what i mean at, at the route to the euros we've we've had ukraine denmark you know what i mean um uh a not very good germany side is what it's been in the past but ultimately you know that that's not Gareth Southgate's fault, is it? I don't. I. I. I and, and people are starting criticising because we've not had any hard game. We didn't have a hard game in the World Cup until we got uh, Belgium and then Croatia. Realistically, yeah. so it's like any cup competition. When people say, "Oh, you know, like you, oh, we're European champions. It's great," and or your FA Cup, you need a little bit of luck in the draw, Dan. You know, um, and um, we've certainly had that in the World Cup. You know, we had a really, uh, I think, uh, uh, a pass to get to the final, but we failed. I think that we've got a pass to get to the final this time around, but I think we've learned our lessons. I think Gareth Southgate's learned lessons as well from what, what's gone on and all that, like, you know. He's got um, a focal point in Harry Kane. He can then mix it and match it with the uh, the players around him. And I think that we've got some really, really young, talented players. You know, when you look at it, I look at the other teams and they've got some good players, but we've got, we've, we've left good strikers at home. You know what I mean? We've got Rashford yeah. that's hardly played. We've got Calvert Lewin that's hardly played. We, we've had, we've got Ings and, um, Watkins. Uh, Watkins that have not even gone. You know, these, these teams, you know, Denmark would, would love to have somebody like that in their team. Italy, I think would like to have, certainly Spain would as well. So we've got options all over the, all over the park. And after watching the games uh, over the, the, the course of the quarterfinals, everybody's tipping Italy and all that. Like, well, I've changed my mind now. I think England are the best team in it now. I really do. I think <sighs> wow. we're very, very sound. I think that, um, I did think we'd get to the final. And maybe come up again uh, unstuck up, but I don't think so now. I think that we've got too much firepower for every team on the pitch and off it as well. I, I think that we can change things up, and, and we haven't had to excel ourselves yet when we're chasing a game. And I think if we was to chase a game, I'd still be confident that on come Saka, on come Greedish, on come Foden, we could still uh, end mm. up doing some real damage. So I'm now thinking that England can win it, maybe a little bit of the hype of what's going on and all that. But I, I'm 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 buzzing for it. I think that um England are in a real good position now to go and win it. And uh and I think Gareth Southgate's got to take a little bit of credit for that. I really do. I think that he's um 
had a little bit of um, criticism. I asked a lot of Spurs fans and I asked a lot of Arsenal fans before this tournament, um, if, if we are to win this tournament or to lose it, it would be down to Harry Kane, uh, down to um, Gareth Southgate. And I, I asked um, a lot of Spurs fans, you know, when the, the managerial job was up, would you want Gareth Southgate? Not one of them Spurs fans said they wanted Gareth Southgate. Not one Arsenal fan I know would want Gareth Southgate. But ultimately, he's not everybody's cup of tea. But what he's doing in England at the moment is doing the business. And I think he's doing really, really well. And um, you can you can only beat what's in front of you. That's, you know, yes, Ukraine were rubbish. But that ain't our fault. That, uh, that ain't our fault that Holland... Um, blew themselves up by getting a player sent off and everything like that. We, we, we probably would have played Holland if they hadn't been, their discipline weren't great or whatever or whatever. Uh, but, but so it's not our fault we got Ukraine, is it? I, I, I don't really get that, why people... We can only beat we can only beat the teams that we're drawn against, can't we? You know, it's not our... We exactly. can't decide who... Exactly. I remember Arsenal winning the FA Cup a couple of seasons ago. We went to um, Sutton, non-league That's right. Side. Lincoln... Um, there was another non-league side. Lincoln. In it. it was Lincoln, wasn't it? Lincoln was and Sutton. Was it yeah. Lincoln who, who were uh, who were in? Um, I don't think they was it. I think I think they was in the league at the time. I think they was top of it, weren't they? Danny Car- Dally Carley was the manager, wasn't he? And then yeah, we I think, Sutton, so. I we think after Sutton it, it was round, Lincoln in the mix, we was in the semi-final. You know, yeah. we played Wigan in the semi-final of another. Do you remember? I know we went to yeah Pernod Wigan, right? Wigan, and then Hull, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah Wigan and the Hull to win a cup final. You know, you have to have a little bit of luck sometimes. You just think like everybody's looking at that now and going, oh, we had Wigan and Hull in the semi-final or final. They look at it now and they won the cup that year. You know, yeah. when we won the cup, when we beat Sutton and, and Lincoln, no one goes on about those games. You know, so we beat Chelsea. I think it, was, it might have been the year. we. I think we beat Aston Villa as well in the final who, 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 who were relegated. You know, yeah. so ultimately... You know, you got to have that little bit of luck on the draw. And when you do, take it. Absolutely, mate. Oh, 100%. Um, caused a lot of drama yesterday, a lot of heated debate, a lot of uh, people on social media, thousands of people watching the clips of you talking about not celebrating for Harry Kane's goals. Didn't see you celebrating them last night, Lisa. You stuck to your word. A lot of people in the chat here saying, sort yourself out, celebrate Harry Kane's. Harry Kane's goal was good. And this one, are you just going to sit there and not celebrate if Kane scores in the 90th minute in the final? Um, I'm celebrating inside. I'm celebrating because you don't go mad and jump up and all that, right? You know, I had a little watch of things yesterday, right? And there's this thing, oh, it's not about Arsenal and Spurs. You have a little look at expressions when uh, Harry Kane scores uh, to when Harry Maguire scores or someone else. There's not the same intense. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pleased that Harry Kane's, listen, Harry Kane is a world-class player. I've never, ever said that he's not. And, uh, you know, as a player, I think he's a fantastic player. And so, and, and I've got nothing against Harry Kane, but I, I, I can't, how can you sit there and and hate a man for so long and then, then jump up and celebrate him? Um, but ultimately, I, I think that he's, um, you know, a, a great player. And I tell you what, all these Spurs fans that are coming at me, like, still, still trying to defend, still trying to defend that it's different with Sol Campbell. Sol Campbell. And it's not. When... When Sol Campbell's playing for an England, he's an England player. But ultimately, Spurs fans say, no, you don't see Harry Kane. But then the, uh, turning around in the next sentence and going, oh, but it's different with Harry Kane. No, it's not. It's not the same. It's the same with Sol Campbell. And it, and I'll tell you what, the Spurs fans are the proper Spurs fans. I know, you know, the hardcore Spurs fans are not never celebrated Sol Campbell scoring a goal and will admit it. There's a lot of people up there that won't. And then that, 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 that is it. You know what I mean? Like, look at what Sol, 20 years ago, by the way, Sol Campbell signed for Spurs. Yes, I don't know if you know that. Like, you know, 20 Arsenal, years ago. you mean. Signed for Arsenal. Yeah, signed for Arsenal from Spurs, yeah. Right, like, 20 years ago, yes, sir. And he's gone out to, to a restaurant and someone's calling him a Judas and a C-U-N-T uh, yeah. in, in there. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, 20 years later. So that Tottenham fan, is he cheering on Harry Kane when he's got, uh, cheering on Sol Campbell when he's got an England shirt? Of course he's not. And I would never ever, if I see Harry Kane, I would never ever abuse him like that. No, no. Like that, you know? Same here. Same so, here. But that's because so, we're normal, normal human beings, mate, and there's not no, many of those around. Well, I that same sort of thing <laughs> that they've had. I get, I, get, I get why they don't like him, 
I get that, right? And I also get why they won't celebrate him after it. You know what I mean? With his score for England. But as my, my one of my real good Spurs mates turned around and said, Lee, I'll tell you this. Now. And, he, and he sat there and he said to me, I would never, ever, whether he had an England shirt on and a penalty in the, in the last minute and cheer Sol Campbell. But the fact of the matter is, Sol Campbell will only score one or two international goals. Right? Yeah. Harry Kane's going to get 30, 40, 50 international goals because he's a striker. So the Tottenham fans are all going to say, oh, yeah. And he's we a top striker Kane. as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, top, top striker. We'll always say that, but ultimately, they ain't, they're they only going to have to cheer on one goal. I think one goal, I think, Sal Campbell scored for England when he played for yeah. Arsenal, yeah. For, when he was at Arsenal. So it's a completely different thing. You know what I mean? Some people like, who agree. So listen, there's a lot of people that agree with you. Listen, the people that ain't going to agree with you are the Tottenham fans, right? They're the ones that aren't going to agree with you. I'm sure Man United, Chelsea, City, Liverpool fans are sitting there going, oh, fair enough, he's a gooner. He don't like Harry Kane. And they move on. It's only the Tottenham fans, I think. Uh, well, listen, I, I, listen, I, I, there are a lot of Arsenal fans. That would, a couple of my mates are really very massive Arsenal fans. You know what I mean? They're very patriotic for Arsenal. Uh, sorry, for England. And we'll cheer, you know, like, you know, and they go over that. You know what I mean? And fair play I've to over it. I've gone over it. I, I was, I was, I was fair celebrating fair last night when Harry Kane scored. I'm, I'm an England fan. Goes over it. I it's would each never your own, though, isn't it? Each your own. Of course it is. And, it, and, and, and as, a, as a fan, if, if I see you jumping up when Harry Kane scores and all that, I'm not going to turn around and just say, oh, get your arsenal allegiances and whatever. That's your prog Yeah. You're, you're well, right. well, I don't see why everybody is making an issue of it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, ultimately, there's a lot of other people that don't cheer on that. Oh, I know that for a fact, but because they're yeah, not on TV or whatever, they don't get seen, and and and, and that's it. Like, you know, um, ultimately, my mum's one of them, mate. My mum's one of them. She, she's yeah. just my mum can't well, do. She's totally with massively, you. Massively pleased that Ars, uh, England won yesterday. Massively pleased that Harry Kane scored goals because if Harry Kane doesn't score goals. We ain't going to win this competition. It's as simple as that, like, you know what I mean? And listen, someone made a great point the other day saying, like, if Harry Kane signs for Man City, will you celebrate a goal and all that, like, you know? I don't really celebrate England goals going mad and all that, like. I think I would do if I was in the pub or something like that when you're in with your mates. It's fan, like I've seen and all that. But if I'm sitting at home and all that, it's, yes, get in. But if you have a look at a lot of my fingers with Arsenal, that's what I'm like as well, unless it's a massive goal. So, no, you are. Yeah, you're not one of these get up, start jumping in front of the camera, lads, are you? No, never I'm not. I've never, so. never done it and never will, whether it be uh, uh, an Arsenal player scoring a goal or um, um, whoever, like, you know. So I'm not I'm not worried about that, like, you know. So listen, I imagine that Harry Kane's a really nice guy off the field. He seems like it anyway, like, you know what I mean? And uh, I think they all are. I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any English lads that I, I sit there and think, oh, I do not like you at all. You're a horrible type thing. Because you have had that with footballers before that have your unit power gets to the red and they just, they, they lose their red. They, you know, got the world at their feet and they just lose their heads a bit. And I don't think we've got anyone like that. They seem to have given us, mate. They seem to have given us. But moving away from Harry Kane, because I think we've talked that to death yesterday and today. But I'll tell you two players, I've absolutely loved this tournament. And two players, one in particular, I never really understood the hype about until I've started to watch this tournament. And that's Declan Rice. I've been really impressed with him, Lee. I think he's been exceptional in the middle there. But also Calvin Phillips. I mean, I really liked this kid at Leeds throughout this season and last season. I'll be amazed if come this coming season, Calvin Phillips is wearing a lead shirt and Declan Rice is wearing a West Ham shirt. I spoke to Fergus yesterday. He's very close to someone we all know very, very closely at West Ham. Um, and he was sort of shaking his head as if to say he's not going to be here. We've, you know, I think he's heading up north. So I think Declan Rice will be playing next to Paul Pogba uh, next season. Um, if you think you so? I'll, I'll if you believe the rumours. I thought it was Chelsea. Um, and I said, ah, oh, Chelsea then. And he said a little bit further up north. That was what he said to me. So we'll see what happens there. Calvin Phillips, though, um, at the two. I think I'd take him, you know. I've been so impressed with him, Lee. He looks absolutely class. He just sits there, dictates, pulls the strings in that midfield. And, I mean, together, there's a partnership that I didn't really see happening, if I'm honest with you. But it's just worked. They've been, both been exceptional, haven't they? Yeah, and that's that's the way it should be. Like, you know, they've got a good partnership. They're two good players. I'll tell you what, Declan Rice uh, does does things. If you took him out of the team, um, you'd, um, you'd miss him. There was a bit in there when, when Luke Shaw lost the ball yesterday. Um, and before they could break on us, he'd, he'd won it back and Luke Shaw had the ball again. No one no one would think, oh, that was a bad mistake. Whether. And that's what he does. No one will even see that. He just won the ball back, just played it back to Luke Shaw. It happened within 
a space of 10 seconds and England were back on the attack. No one sees that. He does an excellent job in there. Like, I think Phillips is, is the same. I think they do a real good job. I think that um, one of the reasons, and this is what I say, you know, about Arsenal, you can look about with Arsenal. Ar- Arsenal, they, 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 even when Arsenal had a fantastic back four, they had a Vieira and Petit in front of them, screening them, screening them, screening them. And let's what's happened with our back four, it's been screening and screening and screening uh, because of these two guys. And then what they do is they let they just sit in there and then let yeah. the players like Mason Mount. Mason Mount, by the way, uh, he must be loving it because he's got two players where he hasn't really got to worry about his uh, defensive shoes because he's got them two in front and, and go on and do what he can do and do. And, and, and by the way, he's been doing it fantastically well. Another player that goes under the radar yeah, quite he does. about his business as a midfield player. You know what I mean? Why do you think that is, Lee? Because I was going to bring this up. Why do you think that he doesn't get the credit that some of the others do, base him out? Because is it because, because he's what's not... on the team? Yeah. He's he not got that extra bit of flair about him like a Grealish or a Saka or a Saka. He hasn't got that. No, he hasn't got that flair little flick or turn or beat players and you know like everybody going mad when Sancho done that little slalom thing yesterday, which they highlight. You know what I mean? But he picks the ball up and plays his passes. It's it's base. It's 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 the basics of football what he does, but he does it well. And uh, and football is a easy is an easy game made difficult. Now, someone like Mason Mount comes along and makes it look easy and doesn't get the credit he deserves for making it look easy. That's, that's in my opinion. No, I, you know, a really good point. the ball up and go running around six or seven players. He hasn't got that ability to do that. But what he has got is a ball he picks up the performance and he, and he sees an eye for a pass, plays it, play, and probably nine times out of ten, plays the, the right pass. It's not one that, you know, so I, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. Um, a little bit like Declan Rice doing what he does on that. But I'll tell you what, he's a coach's dream. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you, like, a coach's dream because he just does what's what, what what's required of him. And that's why he gets into the team. Um, is he a better player than, than, than Foden and Grealish? I don't think so. I think that they're probably better ballers than him. But ultimately, he sits sets into this system and the system that Gareth Southgate wants to do better than those two uh, because he does everything right. And that's why I think that he's, he deserves a, a, a credit. He's come back. I thought I didn't think he was outstanding yesterday, but, but you know, another seven out of ten performance, you know, pushing yeah. on eight. He does it every game, you know. And, and uh, I think someone said in the chat, now I didn't know that, that he created two, with two assists yesterday. I, you yeah. know, everyone's talking about Shaw's assist. I knew the that. corner. I knew, knew the corner, but I didn't realise the other one. So, yeah. There right, so, the corner, I don't really look at that as an assist. You know what I mean? You're, you're, <laughs> jumping, you're, pushing, you're pushing it with uh, things like that. But uh, um, I, I think that, um, you know, it just quietly goes about his business. Mm. Yeah, no, you're absolutely bang on, mate. And I've been really impressed with the midfield for England because it's an area that I thought we would probably lose or get dominated in, particularly against Germany. But... The player's turned up and he's got it right, Gareth. You know, I can't sit there and say that he hasn't. And although I'm not a huge fan of the guy's lack of experience in certain areas, I think that you can say that he's got a lot of experience internationally with the England under-21 setup, And he knows a lot of these players that have now come through into the first team. So perhaps that's what's uh, doing him some favours. I do think, however, like you, that we haven't had a nice, easy, so easier side of the draw. But you can only beat the teams in front of you. Looking at it now, Lee, we've got two potential final games at Wembley, um, Italy or Spain in the final. Two questions. Who do you fancy uh, out of in- Italy and Spain is my first question. And do you think we can beat Denmark? I think uh, um, I'm going to say this now. I think Italy are just slightly in, in a better, better shape and form than, than Spain. So that's why I want Spain to win. So yeah. um, like, Because uh, I think that we, we'll take Spain. I, I I just think that we will take it. I think if we get Italy, it's 50-50. Maybe just slightly our favour because we're we're at home, but <laughs> there'll be a lot of Italians there. Don't worry about that. Like, you know what I mean? So um, I, I think that... Uh, so I'm, I'm wanting Spain to win it from that point of view. England will beat uh, Denmark convincingly. There we go. You've heard it here first. Um, okay, Lee. And who do you think is going to play um, on that left hand side? Because I don't think Sterling or Kane will be dropped. Is it going to be Grealish? Is it going to be Saka? Is it going to be Sancho for the next game? Do you think, mate? Who do you reckon will Grealish go? Grealish comes in there for the next two games. 
Jack Grealish to come in. Now I'm going to answer this one from Christian. He says, Dan, does winning the Euros change his perspective on Gareth Southgate? Listen, if England win a tournament, then of course it does because they have won something which um, I never thought they would win in my lifetime, if I'm honest. I never thought I would leave see England win the World Cup or Euros. It just never did. So well, if that happens... It, listen, they could win the Euros. This, I think that they've got a very, very good chance. They've got no... Listen, they've got no... This is the best chance ever of winning the Euros. And also, they're going to be very, very much in, in the frame next next uh, December for the for the World Cup and all. You know, like mm. once you get one under your belt, you know, like you look at Spain, France, they've done it. So there's a possibility that England could 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 actually go on and win the World Cup as well. Um, wow. And I tell you what, Imagine they're that. very very close to it. Well, it would be amazing, wouldn't it? We got to two semi-finals, and that's the closest we've got in a long time. So let's see what happens. I actually did think. I mean, George has asked here, Dan. Do you think Southgate gets unfairly criticised? I think earlier on we said yes. I think he probably does, yeah. if I'm honest, in what we're seeing now. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, Lee, been a pleasure, mate. Um, I know you've got to shoot off. Someone in the chat did actually say happy birthday to your mum, and I hope she does have a nice day. You having a barbecue? Yeah, today no, as well, mate. Birthday, yes, I. But because I was working. Um, I've got, I'm doing her a barbecue today, and uh, we've got a new barbecue. And uh, you know, I was saying about it yesterday, it still ain't. It's, it's still, yeah, it ain't it's happening. Still, it's not happening. It's not happening. Uh, I could be going out and getting those barbecue trays in, in the next hour or so, like you know. So you might see me up Tesco buying loads of uh, barbecue trays. There you go. Well, mate, I hope you do have a great one. And uh, more importantly, I hope your mum does too. I hope the weather shears up a bit. It's not been grand today, is it? No, so no, right. it's yeah. not been good at all, like, you know, not been good. No. Don't forget, um, before we go, if you haven't checked out the Wimbledon video, it's out and about now. I'll tell you what, we've got Sam that uh, does all the uh, editing for us. He's done an absolute fantastic job on it. He's made me look professional. That's all I can say on that, like, you know what I mean? Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. So if you've not gone and watched that, go and watch it. It's a good little uh, video. Um, I'm quite pleased with it, how it's turned out. And uh, it does show the experience of Wimbledon. So uh, give it a go if you haven't. Yeah, it's a really good watch, actually. It's only about five or six minutes as well. So it's well worth a watch. It just shows you you run down from entering Wimbledon to leaving Wimbledon and uh, all in between. I must say, Lee, what a hospitality suite that is there. I've never been. That is unbelievable. Oh, it's, it's so nice. It's just, just different class. It's different class, you know what I mean? So... Uh, um, and and I'll tell you what, they look after you like like you're a king, you know. And it is just a, it is a fantastic experience. Very very fortunate to to mm. to be able to get that and go to that. Well, I'd yeah. like I'd like to think they do treat you like royalty if it's uh, free quid for strawberries and cream. Jesus, yeah, like, right. you don't get that many strawberries. You know what I mean, like you know. So, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's fancy. It, it, it's fantastic, like you know. So there was a bit in the video I'd love to have got on there quickly. It was uh, uh, there was a fellow like. In there, he was absolutely drunk, you know. You know, how can I say, has abused, abused the the, the hospitality thing, and he's got right. a full thing, and he's just talking to this fella that he don't know, and he's just poured it all over and soaked him. <laughs> like he's trash, he's absolutely soaked him. And the fella was as cool as a cucumber because he's posh, you know what I mean? But I'll tell you what, if it had happened in the pub last night, I'd have been a bloody row, like you know what I mean? So, uh, but can it was you imagine. Fun. Different, oh. different setting, mate. Different yeah, setting. Different but, setting um, no, not me, so there you go. No, it looked good, mate. I'm glad you had a good time and it was a good video. So please make sure you've come and watched that. Give that a like. Please smash this video a like. We would appreciate it. Thank you all for joining us. It's been great to see uh, so many of you again in the chat. Really, really great stuff. Nice to see the channel growing where we want it to be. And if you keep coming back, we will keep putting content out there. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We're just over 3,000 subscribers now, so we'd like to get that up as much as we can do. Uh, please come and follow our socials that are down the screen at the bottom uh, and until then we will see you next time guys you take it easy and uh, yeah come on England it's coming on.